Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to round number two of the Formula Renault 2K World Cup here on Racebot TV, streaming live also on iRacing Live, where today we come to you from Road Atlanta. We saw it earlier on on the official side. Now we have some of the best riders in the world doing battle here at this fantastic racetrack. It's a tad over four kilometers in length here. And these guys will be running for a total of 33 laps here today. Wolvinson along with Jake Sperry and Cameron Wold. You can see air temp 67 degrees. It is a little bit humid, but some high, high wind speeds. And that means we're likely to have some interesting drafting opportunities here today. We've got just about a minute remaining until we head ourselves down to the starting grid for this evening's event. And well, Cam... We saw Road Atlanta earlier. This is a different Road Atlanta in terms of the weather. The winds have picked up. These guys have to make a pit stop and we're running for 33 laps here today. Well, we absolutely are. Well, hello, everybody. And uh, pit entry going to be so very important. Pit exit going to be so very dangerous. But here at Road Atlanta, as we all know, it's an exciting racetrack. You basically have no time at all to yourself uh, except for that one long straight. And it's so tense and so tight with all the cars around that it can never uh, always end well going into a very tight chicane. But here we are, the 12 turn, 2.54 mile track. I'm very excited, Road Atlanta. One of my very favorites. Yep, so now you can see the ticker has expired. Well, that means that practice is over. That means we head ourselves down to the starting grid. And well, these guys, they qualified yesterday. So let's show you in just one second's time what qualifying is going to look like in terms of the starting grid, if we can. Any moment now. Maybe, maybe not. No, yep, there we are. So let's have a look then. There's your starting grid for this evening's event you can see why a good and pole position it's a big big fast field here today though at road atlantis so we're going to cycle through your grid as quickly as we can white good and then on pole position just like he was earlier on today he is going to be literally hoping to do back-to-back -back wins here today there's remainder of your field hugo louise go away as uh, so there we can see there it's a big Big field, 48, 50 drivers running here at Road Atlanta here today. Now, just waiting for the last of these drivers to head themselves down to the starting grid. Then we can get this show on the road. We love these Formula Renault 2.0s. And there you can see the front of your field any moment now. They are going to get those lights on on top of the icing.com gantry. That means we can get ourselves underway here at Road Atlanta. 33 laps worth of action then. We'll start... Now, it's a good start there by White Good and a good start though by the driver in P number two. So come down in towards turn number one for the first time. Let's see who will win out then. They're going to be two. They're going to be three wide down in your pack as they come through the first couple of corners. Will they all survive? No, we've got a car off already. Well off into the grass through turn number one. And well, it's that case now. They've got to slow it down. We've got one, two drivers there off track. And well, we've got ourselves a little bit of carnage, a little bit of mayhem at the start of this one, Jake. Oh, yes, we do. We've got a few cars off. Harley Lewis involved. Rene Osterkamp, another one of my drivers there at Hydroforce Racing, involved. But, well, it just seems that everyone's got through fine. Everyone's got through nicely. And, well, no, there's a couple more incidents further back down the field. Problems all the way throughout. And it's not ideal for anyone. But Wyatt Goon at the moment, he's got everything sorted. Yeah, as we just saw, Rene Hartman has had himself an incident. We've had a couple of people. We'll sort ourselves through it as well. Kevin Vaughan then. Another driver who looks as though that he's going to be classified as either well down the field or out of your race. But Simon Povey then. Let's go on board of him. He's running himself in third. He's looking for second. As they head themselves down in towards turn 10A for the first time. And well, let's move Simon Povey up into P2 for the moment in that Panda Motorsports car. And well, Cam, earlier on it was low wind speeds. That meant it was not really a draft fest. Today, different story. Well, very much. It's coming out of the east as well, uh, which could always influence here this straight. Uh, of course, facing uh, or just about that direction. Why? Good. No, he will lead the first lap. He will lead them coming up towards the uh, corner number three, the ever tricky one uh, with uh, Povey and Gamat and following uh, Lebert in a fourth. 
as, uh, well, everyone seems to be sorted out now. Michael Mittner and Nick Thyssen, though, fighting for P10, uh, and they are leading a very long train of very hungry uh, Renaults, and I think right now uh, this field got so very separated. Sean McBeth having an incident uh, coming off of turn number three. Yep, so Macbeth then another driver involved in incidents at the start of this one. You can see though they go three wide in towards turn number five. They'll slow it down to two wide once again. That's the core money sports car of Make Place there. He's scrapping it out with Julian Grunstel as they head themselves now out of seven. And you just see how busy this racetrack is. It is literally like going on a highway just at 150 miles an hour. Actually gonna go on board with the driver of Julian um, Brunistville, as you can see alongside him right now, that's going to be the number 96 machine of Jerome Hag. He'll get the pass complete as ahead they go too wide as well with Javier Soto and make place. They will go side by side in towards turn 10A and 10B. Up the hill, they will come once again the 611 machine heading themselves three wide, and that is Ricardo Lurie there, but they survive. They'll move themselves forward as Ben Demo. Let's have a look on board of him. Sorry. The driver of Stephen Deem even in the 808 private team machine hunting down Thomas Schmidt for P7, Jake. Oh, yes, he is at the moment. And, well, Schmidt, they know, oh, they're going to go really close. And they are going to make contact there. And Schmidt's going to have to yield in this situation. Not one place, but two. Three will go Lucas Gotch. And he put in a great showing of third earlier on. And, well, he'll have to deal with Nick Thyssen and Michael Mittner behind him as well. And, well, that wasn't ideal for Schmidt. But now he's got to get back into his rhythm. Work again as you look at Lucas Gotch here trying to have another go here on uh, Stephen DM at the moment. And well, a couple of cars have already lost themselves now at the moment. As there is a car spun around there. Yeah, that's Lionel Gamet in the GTRS machine down at turn seven, Jake. Yes, it is Lionel Gamet, and he was running up in third position. So that's a massive, massive shock. It will move Le Bear up into the podium, but a few cars there are out. Uh, Joel Guez, Kevin Vaughan, and the driver who does this for real life, 331, Lando Norris. Yeah, and it does look as though that actually Fleet Bay Burr might have been there involved, helping turn around that number 40 machine. We get ourselves another look then, down in towards that double apex right hander. As you can see, White Good and will set the fastest lap of the day so far. It is a long race. Actually, no, I take that back. Gamut lost that one all by himself. But then he did get a tag from Philippe Leber. Leber had nowhere to go as these guys work themselves now on lap number four of 33 here. We've had a couple of people then classified as out of this event, but we have got some very close racing. Brian Lockwood there in the Discovery Sim Racing Machine fighting it out with Michael Mittner right now. So much action going on here. You don't even know what to look at half the time, Cam. No, I keep seeing battles, and I want to say, hey, let's take a look over here, but uh, it, while that's happening, there are so many other battles going on in the track right now, just going right through the field. Uh, if you're looking back, Michael DeJong in that number 11 car, he's all the way back in 31st. Uh, he uh, had a horrible qualifying, started in 49th. So he's already up almost 20 positions and right behind Harley Lewis and Thomas Torp are fighting for 31st uh, position. But this, uh, we're starting to find ourselves in some packs here as, uh, well, everyone just stacks it up for the uh, that double right-hander there before the very long straight. And, uh, well, we're starting to see a couple of groups here, Will. And I think as we start heading towards the chicane again and again and again, we're going to see a lot of action. Yeah, Michael Nittler there. He's going to move himself up in position. He'll move himself past Brian Lockwood for just one moment. Another fast lap of the day by Wyatt Good. And he's now got himself a 1.4 second advantage over Simon Povey. Povey to Gabor Mex. That is 4.1 second right now. And Justin Broom has moved himself up into fourth place ahead of Elite Le Burr for the time being. He's a move for Elite Le Burr now down into P number five for the time being. And actually, we saw Le Burr struggle about this stage of the race earlier on today. So it looks so that may be an inherent issue with that car's setup, Jake. Well, yes, it does seem like a problem, but how much of that oh, is... Oh, sorry, Cobra the... Racetrack. Two cars turned around there. That's a um, five-plus car. Um, and you've got Julian Brunston around there as well. So two drivers involved in incidents. And there's the other one that you just saw involved with. That was Nicholas Jonston in the 228 high-performance motorsports car. As we'll get ourselves another look at this one. It seems to be that turn four is that difficult corner here today. The guys are picking up the pace. It really is a single groove portion of the racetrack, Jay. But they just want to try and go too wide. It doesn't often work. No, what seemed to happen there with Nicholas Johnson is that he had to give the room and then when he gave the room he had a twitch and then he lost it straight into place. Right now looking at the battles just ahead of him, uh, Seatwager there is going to be under threat at the moment and well you see Michelle De Jong and Harley, Harley Lewis there 
uh, having a battle there. Harley Lewis in the Carbon Racing team. He's having a fantastic showing at the moment as they head down into it. And, oh, they get really close. And Harley Lewis will spin himself around and he'll tag someone else as well. Not ideal. Yeah, meanwhile, Arjen de Frieta there side by side in that number 86 machine. He's got the number 35 car. They almost went free wide in towards turn number one. That is the driver of Nick Thiessen involved in that one. Oh, de Frieta turn around. This is down in turn number three. Turn number three being a big trouble point once again. Now it's Arjen de Frieta turned around in that third corner. Replay, another look at that one on board with him. And well, Cam, turn three, turn four is your big trouble spot here today. We talked about the weather. Maybe that's part of it. Well, not only that, you're overloading that suspension. You're pretty much at your peak for mechanical grip. You're trying to bring the car in as fast as possible, and especially going too wide into that corner. It's very difficult to, to really practice going in there side by side. Arion uh, had lost the car, and he ended up looping it all on his own, and that will lose him a massive amount of positions. But Thomas Schmidt, though, uh, well, he actually lost the car uh, right, after, right before they did. So uh, quite a couple of cars are losing their grip here. Uh, I almost wonder if perhaps these guys are so used to uh, having solo ran, they don't necessarily plan on having these holes punched in the air here. Perhaps a little bit higher wing probably would have helped. But for the most part, though, uh, I have to say, it's the, a lot of what we're seeing is uh, single car shimmies, and uh, they don't really have enough room to cover it. It's a massive pack. Starts heading to the start finish line. Michael Mittner and Jordy Lopez Jr. in that number 60 car leading that large pack into turn number one. Yeah, as they will head themselves now down towards that trouble spot of turn number three. Once again, here's Michael Mittner then. He's the second car in line behind. You can see that's grabbing it out as the core motorsports car is involved in that one but it's all about track management here Tom Ward had a horrible day earlier on in that trouble six machine he's racing again here he's currently running himself in P number 12 and he's moved himself so far up 12 places from where he starts so a good run so far by the driver of Tom Ward let's get your biggest movers and shakers in the event so far Gosh is up seven positions Laurie is up eight inside of your top ten so a number of drivers Having some big gains early on in this one. But the battles, they don't stop. As here you can see, you've got now the Carolina Sports driver of David Williams. Right on the rear, almost pushing Javier Soto as Michael Mitt and Tom Ward. They go side by side ahead. Ward will get the position from that one. But David Ward, David Williams even, let's ride on board of him. Will he take the outside line? Down into 10 -8. Oh, yes, he does, but actually, they go free wide, and that's where coming Arjen de Frieta. He gets a two-for-one special, and it's a slow car there, down in the middle of the racetrack, and somehow, all those drivers avoid him. Oh, yes, they do, and I'm not sure who that was who got involved. I believe the car there was Ricardo Lowry there, the 611 machine, dropping himself down the order. Not ideal in those scenarios, but right now, it just seems that everyone's going to try and wait here for the situation to go up and Simon Povey actually the car who was running in second position has dropped himself down into fourth and well something else to note is Lucas Gotch is through on Philippe Lebert so now we do have this battle for second place because Gabble Mex and Justin Brunner are starting to pull themselves together here Will and this is going to be an interesting battle Gooden's already away and he's away by seven seconds yeah Simon Povey we're trying to figure out what happened to him so we're having a look on board of Povey this was standing towards turn number three is he another driver just to have an incident? Because Simon Povey now is running himself in P number four. So he's been passed by a couple of people. As Jerome Hag there has had himself a spin. That is down at turn number seven. Busy, busy racetrack here. But out front, Wyatt Gooder continues to tick off. Fastest lap after fastest lap. The gap now between him and P number two up to 7.7 .7 seconds as it stands. And then from Gabor Mex to Justin Brummer, it is only about 0.7 of a second. Brummer to Povey. That's one that's worth looking at in more detail. Povey now 2.1 seconds behind the drive of Justin Brummer. Povey starting to struggle. Gotch right on the coattails of Povey. Through four, through five. And Gotch is saying, hey, I'm going to go down to the inside. But then he's almost going to end up looping it around. You don't go too wide through that section where there's not a lane cam. Who do you think he was? Kvyat? Uh, but uh, at least I think that's how that uh, driver from that professional motorsport name is pronounced. But yes, Luke Gulch, though, he's now in the locked, uh, in the sights of Philippe Lebert, uh, as Simon Povey's been given that, uh, just a slightly bit of relief here. I have to say, with how much these cars are, uh, are getting tapped around, uh, 
you know what? These cars are holding their to themselves together very, very well. Uh, so Lucas Gotch, though, he's working away. Philippe LeBaire should get the draft, and he should be able to catch up before the chicane as long as LeBaire's car is behaving properly. Uh, and, well, it doesn't look like he's going to have enough room to get on the back side. But, Will, just uh, as we start trying to pull away here, Tom Ward and uh, Michael Mittner are fighting for 10th position. Tom Ward just went on the inside. Matt Posh and Jordy Lopez Jr. are also going as they had their way towards the chicane just one more time. Oh, Tom Ward gets a huge wiggle, though, through the chicane and up the hill. Mittner will come. He'll think about looking down to the inside. We stay on board then with Mittner. He will try and do the sweep through the final corner. But no, the outside line works well. Friction Racing Machine able to hold on and stay in your top 10. He is now your biggest mover inside of your top 10. It's been a crazy start to this motor race. Javier Soto very close. As you also got Mark Emmon and Matthew Daniels. They are scrapping it out for position. We ride ourselves on board with Mark Elkman there in the number 911 machine through turn number three. They'll head themselves down the hill once again. But still... Uh, there's still so many drivers there just having little incidents and we've got oh a car turned around that is Jerome Hag that's his second time he's looped it here today Jake yes it is and well Jason Marichal running off the escape road I think they might have had a bit of contact together but right now at the moment it just seems that everyone in the mid pack is all starting to try and fight all trying to find themselves together again and well, for the LM Ren Sport Machine, 87 Michael Mittner is going to have to be wary because they're fighting behind Mike Palouche. And well, the other car there of Jordi Lopez Jr., they're going to be side by side. No, it seems that at the moment it is just about enough uh, for the moment to go there. And we do apologize for our live tournament score as Mittner runs it horribly wide and he will lose not one but two positions, Will. Yeah, as you'll see there, just having a look at Ricardo Lorry. He's just worked himself there past the number 52 machine of Gregory Tanson. Still a lot of battles going on. Jordi Lopez Jr. almost being pushed to the outside there um, with Mark Pulse and Mitt, uh, Michael Mittner there. This freeway battle, they are getting very, very racy right now. But that was almost there. Mark Pulse puts almost into the wall on the run down to turn number one cam. Oh, absolutely. And we've already seen this a couple of times. You get a run off the hill here. You align side by side and you try to work your way through it as just a, a whole group of cars once again enters. Uh, turn one comes up through the S's here as uh, well, it's, we have a very slow car, the number 440 Schmidt. car of Thomas Schmidt. He is very slow coming off the S's. I think he had a, a self spin and that's going to bottle up even more cars here. Is really 24th all the way through 18th are all locked up together their horns are all locked to well, even 17th 16th and well all the way up to to david williams and 14th are all within a uh, hair's breadth of each other as far as these uh, these renault cars are working well and this huge pack here from 14th all the way back to 26th is just a, an impressive sight to see at the very least well, you know, one, one other thing that we need to talk about at some point, pit stops, because they will happen. And you sometimes might, in this sort of race, think about, where can I come in and just get a couple of laps of clean air so I can do the good old-fashioned hot lap? Because if you can do that, find some clear track, you may well be able to leapfrog an absolute ton of cars. Stephen Dean right now, battling it out with Philippe Bird. This is battle for P number six on track, the 808 machine there. Oh, Stephen Dean. Battling out with TNT Racing for Leap Labour down towards this double apex right hander. They will go once again. As there's your top 15 there on the left hand side of your screen. Apologies if you don't mention your favourite driver. There's just so much that is going on on track right now. As we have ourselves there, Ricardo Lori, Yavi Sato going side by side down in towards turn number seven. And having a look now from the rear of that driver of Ricardo Lori in the full speed SCR machine. He has moved himself up, well, two places now, since the drop of the green flag here today. Well, those pit stops, strategy will be very important here as Le Burr does lose that position there, Jake, to the driver of Stephen Dean. Oh, yes, he does, and that is not ideal for the car of Philippe Le Burr losing out to Stephen Dean. It seems that he's got some problem on him because he was right up there at the very beginning. He hasn't had any incidents but he has dropped 20 seconds off the pace, and that is not natural by any stretch of the imagination for Philippe Lebert. He's about half a second to a second slower than the cars are around him, and well, to point something out very important, the gap at the front, it's 10 seconds. It will take a horror stop from Wyatt Goon to throw this one away, and he's not the sort of driver who will go and do that. No, indeed, there you can actually see Wyatt Goon, and he's already heading himself on the road 
um, on the back straightaway there. You can see, as uh, so we just have a look from the rear of Wyatt Gooden, you see there's pretty much just a lap car and no one else in sight. Down in your pack, just a little bit. There is that ongoing train we have. Matthew Daniels, Javier Soto, they continue to scrap Daniels there down to the inside in that number 91 Red Devolution racing machine. Out the corner they come, down towards 10A, 10B, they come once again. Oh, we got a car off there. That looks as though that is going to be the drive of David Williams. And that's in a part of the racetrack where you should be going straight there. So let's have a look at what happened to him. I think maybe David Williams wasn't paying attention and he just ends up going off the racetrack. Indeed, oh, he catches a white line. And how does he avoid hitting anything else there? Just a little bit of contact with it, the side of another car, but somehow, Cam, they get away with it. Well, somehow indeed, and uh, well, he managed to, to get it pulled away. Um, I think that car, well, he, he just, uh, he lost it. I think, you know what? It almost looks like the car bottomed out on the curbing, and it lost the front wheels. Uh, and without those front wheels, the, front, uh, the rear wheels just drove it right across a broadside, and he uh, got, really got that front wing kinked. And, uh, well, he'll have to continue. David Williams will. And, uh, well, he's carrying that nose dome damage, but they should be able to get it fixed uh, at the at the pit stops, which should be coming momentarily. Yeah, in fact, we've had Ricardo Laurie, the first driver in, but he was a driver who was involved in that incident with David Williams. So he potentially just came in to get a couple of repairs done to that race car. He is back out and away. Let's circulate ourselves a little bit further down your field because David Williams, David Williams has gone off again. Hard impact into the wall. And well, it looks as though that was suspension related because you don't turn left in a right hand corner like that one, Jake. Oh, no, you don't. I'm just trying to look at the incident. I seemingly have lost it. Therefore, I will not be able to tell you exactly what happened. But the cameras here will tell you what exactly did happen. But right now, you just have to say for the David Williams, that is going to be uh, the wrong way of going through things. That is um, out there. It's an odd place to actually lose the car. I think we've only seen maybe a couple of guys lose it before. But let's just focus here on this battle for second place right now between Gabor Mex and Justin Brunner right now because they are running nose to tail and they will be looking to try and find themselves in a position where one will be leapfrogging the other, possibly, as pit stops come around. Yeah, Philippe Leibert's been in, but he overshot his pit stall. He's out and away in 5.5 seconds. But Philippe Leibert tries to come in early but doesn't gain advantage because he overshoots his pit stall. So, right now, let's go back to the battle for P number two, P number three, as actually, um, Justin Brunner just lost a couple of turns for a second in a straight line here, so maybe he's just having to coast to make it into the fuel window, because we are expecting more drivers on pit road in the next couple of laps. We're on board then with Justin Brunner in that number 102 machine, out of the final corner, down past start finish time to start another lap he will do. Rob Reed versus Mark Elkerman. These drivers, they go side by side in towards that very, very hard turn, 10A, turn B. In fact, they're thinking about going three wide into that corner. They're not going to. They stay side by side as the Apex Racing UK machine on the inside gets tagged almost there by the Red Devolution Racing Machine down. And he's actually going to be on towards pit road for Rob Reed in that Apex Racing UK machine cam. Well, absolutely. If you are absolutely impinged by traffic, you might as well come down the pits while you can. You're on the inside. He was getting harried by David uh, Saranzo. And uh, ultimately, though, I have to say, well, that's about as safe as pit entry as you can possibly get. Mark Ackelman, he's going to get away. But uh, Schmidt, Saranzo, uh, Sightwagger, uh, Landau, and Michael DeJong is uh, all going to be pulling themselves away. And uh, Michael, I mean, it's he started all the way back in 49th position. He's up to 21st, Michael DeJong is. So that's a good running from him right there. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, Rob Reed is going to get his pit service, and he'll come away. Uh, it's just uh, well, one of those things where you got to try and uh, plan it right. Yeah, as Wyatt Gooden stays out to do another lap, Gabor Mex will do the same, as will Justin Brunner. They're just kind of cycling through a couple of your drivers. You can see that no one really is coming in inside of your top ten. Not just yet. Michael Mitner versus Jordi Lopez Jr. These two drivers battling it out for P8 and 9 on track. And they will head themselves past the start-finish line once more. Getting ourselves now towards halfway in this event. Still got a fantastic scrap going on down here though. Javier Soto, Mark Plass, Matty Daniels. Three drivers separated by nothing. They come past the start-finish line and behind. Mikel de Jong versus, uh, well, he's just moved himself. 
Um, past another driver, because Christian Tackett is on towards pit road. A couple of people on towards pit road. You've got yourself a driver, Stefan Sweetfoot, on pit road as well, Jake. Yes, we do. Just a couple of drivers in your midfield, mid to late field, actually coming into pit lane. Something to note here about these Formula Renault cars. They fill up so fast. It actually does catch a couple of people out. Likes of Christian Takash will be very much uh, looking here. But looking here in this battle further back down the field here, Bruno Domita here having a fight here. The number 16 machine there for TDT Racing here is fighting with uh, Julian Grunestel, who's had a few instances of his own. And well, the guys here down in the lower end of your field will, they have to try and fight as hard as they can for as many points as they possibly can as Domita runs a horribly wide car. Slow, Philippe Lebert. Philippe Leibert, oh, an boy. issue to him then somewhere. Philippe Leibert, he has already pitted as well. So Philippe Leibert, this is not what he would have wanted to have had happen. Oh no, actually, I take that back. He, he's made a pit stop already. He is a little bit slow, but he is kind of where he should be at this stage in the motor race. Stephen Zima is on pit road. More drivers on pit road right now. 808 machine is in the pit. Um, and so, Philippe Leiber had himself a bit of a self spin there coming down to turn number five. As we see more drivers then on pit road. Mark Elkerman is on pit road as we speak. Stephen Deem on pit road, out of pit road. And his pit stop time, 6.8 seconds. He will head himself back out onto track. You've got yourself Brian Lockwood versus Rafael Draskas. These are one driver who's pitted, one driver who hasn't pitted. You notice just how busy the track gets when you've got cars coming out of pit road cam, merging into pretty much a single groove part of the racetrack. Well, not only that, but the suspension is absolutely loaded from that first turn. It's completely loaded, uh, all the mechanical grip and the aerodynamic grip in use. So trying to uh, move yourself around, as we can see, Mark Jarvis, he's coming out hot of Rene Osterkamp as uh, he'll pull away mark jarvis will end up getting away now he's uh gonna be uh, getting back trying to get back into the groove for that number two mark jarvis car but uh this is one of those things if you got somebody that's pulling out in front of you, you I, i'm not necessarily sure if you go on full attack but at the same time though uh, it's uh, definitely a decision you got to start making and i think it's going to get interesting for our race leader yeah uh wyatt gooden so we've got ourselves yeah. more people on pit road, but we also saw Bruno Dominta there having an incident. I think Philippe Leiber might have been involved in that one as well. Oh, we've got Lionel Gamet off of the track as well in the GTRS car cam. Yes, we do. And this is right at the chicane. This is at the exit of the chicane here. So I can tell you. Uh, well, actually, you know what? This is a surprise. He locked the fronts and then he tried to sort the car out. He tried to spin it around. He ended up going right into traffic and Javier Soto had nowhere to go. And he ended up punting that uh, Formula Renault car into the air. So Soto, he will have to come immediately down pit road. But that is awful for Javier Soto. Absolutely nothing he could have done going through that chicane. Yeah, um, sorry, we just lost our video there for one second. It's okay. We're back as White Gooden heads himself on towards pit road in the number 18. Radicals Online Machine slows it down to pit road speed. Will Gabba Max join him and coming towards pit road this time by? We'll find out in just a moment. Time. I don't actually think he is. He yes, is. he will. So there is Gabba Max. He'll come in. Also, Justin Brimmer will come in as well. Nick Thiessen will join them. So your top four drivers are all on pit road at exactly the same time. So why good him? He has led like he did earlier today. So far, absolutely lights a flag. He will make his pit stop and he will come out in a total time of 4.8 seconds. Gabor Mex now. Time for his pit stop. What can he do in the number 103 machine? He comes out and away in 4.5 seconds. Justin Brunner will complete his service in 5.1 seconds. And Nick Thiessen will do it in exactly... Five seconds, all thereabouts. 4.998 for him. Nick Thiessen, ultra consistent as ever. Now, having ourselves a look. It looks so pretty much everyone has done their pit stop, with the exception as one. Matthew Daniels is on pit road. And we've got ourselves um, good and on an island, apparently, Cam. Well, I, I'm just, uh, we were talking about exit, and we've seen actually a pretty couple hairy uh, exits of the pit lane. Wyatt Gooden, that number 18 Radicals car, well, he's got Thibault Solion ahead of him in 37th position, and I am talking, you can barely see a speck of that Radicals red in the distance behind Thibault, and then uh, you go back, and it's Gabor Mex, who is in second position, so he is on an absolute island right now. Uh, and uh, I have to say, that's a good place to be here at Road Atlanta. You can kind of space yourself out, and I think we can see why Wyatt Gooden is able to pull away lap after lap after lap. He's got really nothing else to worry about than hitting his marks in that Formula Renault 2.5.
Indeed so. Let's have a look down in your pack a little bit because we've still got some fantastic battles going on. There you can see we're having a look at Nicholas Lando right now. He is on the inside of this battle, but they almost make contact. That's his 738 machine of David Soranzo in um, that machine. But you can see the two continue to battle it out side by side. Down the back trailer where they come. And at this point, it's going to be a drag race. Who can break later in towards 10 a, as they're going to go free wide. You can see a car there heading himself on the outside. So let's go free wide and towards. And it's going to be the outside line that wins out there. And that was the driver of Mark Jarvis in the carbon racing machine. Fantastic two for one special there, Jake. He's now up into P21. Yes, the carbon racing driver will be looking to try and get more of the same, but he'll have to leave the train. Of course, he lives in the shadow of his foster brother, um, David Jarvis, I do believe. And well, you can see just how much Mark Jarvis wants it, because you look at Saranto, you look at Landau, they're all trying to fight, all trying to find themselves in a good position. And well, they're all going to try and catch to cash up ahead of them. But right now, I'm looking here at Mike Mike Palouche here, who's just got through on Mark Elkerman at the moment. And these two are going to go side by side as they head towards six, seven, and then down along straight away, they'll surely be side by side in that respect. Yeah, we just saw though a pass with Justin Brunner and Lucas Gotch. This is for third place. We're having a look then from the rear of Justin Brunner as he does lose that position to Lucas Gotch for the time being. Nice clean pass in towards 10A and we're now into that phase of the race where you're gonna see a lot of swip swapping between a couple of drivers as potentially we will see Brunner versus Gotch. That one go to the end of this motor race. Matthew Daniels versus Gregory Tanson. That one is very close. You've got Thomas Smith, Rob Reed, and Michael De Jong. They are very close, the three of those guys right now. And then you've got a car that's just gone off there. And that was the driver of Rafael Draskas, I think. Um, actually, no, look at these guys. They are going too wide, too deep almost through the final corner we're going to ride ourselves along board with one of them and it's this one it's um, Javier Martinez and it was this guy we just saw David Saranzo was the guy who went off down at 10b and he goes off again in turn number one and that time he just avoids the wall but he does however get himself a big big moment as a consequence and well he is certainly struggling after that one Gooden still leads by 10.5 seconds he can take it off the noisy pedal just a little bit but this battle for P number three and four, this one is far from overcam. Well, absolutely here. It's Lucas Gonch and Justin Bruner, just as we saw that uh, that one car there. He uh, he just slid it off into the grass there. Not much you can do when uh, David Saranzo could have done. Uh, and, but he safely brought it back on track. That's what you like to see as, uh, well, you know, you've got Gabriel Max, Lucas Gotch, and Justin Bruner. You know, actually, these guys are running very similar lap times, but uh, Gotch was a, a hundredth faster that last time by. But, you know what, I have a feeling that's just in the draft getting past, and uh, I expect Justin Bruner, he might slip on by going down this very, very long road Atlanta straight here. But uh, I'm not necessarily sure if they work on it together, they will catch up to Gabor Max, uh, Justin Bruner, of course, and Gabor Max teammates. Well, yeah, it's also worth noting that gap is 1.1 seconds between a 103 and 172 machine as it stands right now. Still, though, plenty of racing to go. For those of you who are just joining us, there are your track conditions. 11 kilometers an hour wind speed here today. Air temp 67 degrees, track temp 77 degrees. So it is actually pretty cold, but it is a little bit humid here with some high winds. It's kind of brisk early spring day here at Road Atlanta as Christian Talix there having himself an incident. This is down at turn number five. The Red Devolution Racing Machine having himself an incident down in the same place that we've seen so many people do here today. Turn three, turn four, turn five seems to be the trouble point in this race truck. Just like you normally expect from Road Atlanta, it's another case of just touch the white line, wrong cam, and from then on in, you're going to be a passenger for what we like to call the merry-go-round of spinning. Yeah, it's a fairly uh, difficult spin cycle, of course. Going down at Road Atlanta, you've got grass, which will help you right into the runoff areas, which will... Oh, sorry, then, trouble, uh, trouble, trouble. We just talked about turn number five. We just had another incident in turn number five. That was Lucas Gotch there, the driver who we were just talking about, being in P number two. He is going to be out of this motor race cam. 
Absolutely, and we've seen this spin happen probably 20 times already today. You uh, gather yourself up to the corner. If you carry just a little bit too much more, uh, too much speed, that rear end will start kicking out on you. You start fighting with it, but your car is already trying to traction for the long straight, and uh, he ends up looping that and going straight into the inside tire barrier. The entirety of the front assembly is destroyed, and I have a feeling that car is crabbing. Yeah, Lucas Gunch has gotten out of that car. He is done for today. Yeah, and also Stephen Ziegler has had himself an incident as well was this down into turn number one and two we're in, on board with the sim rc.de machine there are a number of drivers having incidents and it does seem to be that the tires they lose their shit ah it's just a slow spin there for Zika. but he is now going to be classified as out of this motor race which is a shame um because we have had a moderately low attrition overall there are some fantastic battles going on at the very rear of your field jake Fable Tuber and Scott McIntyre and Rennie Osterkamp, these three drivers are still going at it. Yell outside of your top 30, but they're having some fun. Just as ahead of them, Nicholas Lando and Dominic Brennan are having some fun right now. Oh yes, most certainly they are. And well, you can see just how much it means to quite a few drivers up and down your field here. Of course, points are plenty here and everyone will want to fight. And just remember, there are points in the second split as well as the first split. So there's more to fight for, even if you miss your qualifying. But right now, I'm focusing on the battle here between David Saranzo and Thomas Torp right now as they head themselves into turn number one. Christian Takash ahead of them for Red Devolution. Of course, he'll be looking for a much better result the next race that we will head to. But right now, heading through one and two, it seems that all is calm and dandy at the moment in the world there. As we look at Javier Soto just up ahead, he's having a little look at Thomas Schmidt. Yeah, we just had ourselves a slow car of Mike Place there. There we can see that car is damaged. Let's get ourselves a second look at that one. But he is losing himself all forms of positions. Is it turn number five? It's turn number five, Cam. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, it's a pretty tricky area to go, and Scott McIntyre and Rennie Osterkamp have been fighting very, very hard for the last couple of turns, and they are coming down. They're approaching turn number five here. Let's see, can Scott McIntyre and Rennie Osterkamp keep their open-wheel cars nice and stable through this corner? Oh, they look like it gave a little bit of a wiggle from Rennie Osterkamp's car, but they get under it, and they will be coming upon Bruno Domitor, uh, which is uh, going to be a uh, not necessarily a lapped car, but a damaged car, as, of course, these two cars are fighting for 30 seconds, and Bruno Domitor is in 28th position. Position. So, uh, different uh, laps, I believe, yet for those two cars. So, Scott McIntyre and Ronnie Osterkamp, though, they have been going at it hammer and tong for the last lap and a half, two laps. And uh, we're continuing to watch that. Yeah, Mikel de Jong, though, he's just had the slowest, weirdest spin I've seen in a very long time. This really sums up this Formula Renault 2.0 machine. We're going to ask us one more look at it. This is in the number 11 machine, of course, made up an absolute ton of places early in this one. But let's just listen into it. Oh, he does get tagged from behind. That's what spins him off into the gravel. But Mikel de Jong there in that Mad Cat Racing Team car has lost all forms of positions as a consequence. And here comes Tom Ward. We're on board of him right now as he's battling it out with Stephen Dean for position. Who will win this battle? It's going to be Tom Ward for the time being in that treble six friction racing car. Up the hill he comes. He's up a position as we now go around to see oh we got another car off that's justin brenner off justin brenner it's into the wall there justin brenner into the wall this is down at the final corner we haven't seen any incident down at the final corner actually no this isn't the final corner this is that same trouble spot turn one turn two turn three that we've been talking about already and now justin brenner just tags that curb spins that car around that vortex in racing car into the wall that is not what you want to have happen. He does rejoin. He's running in fourth there, Jake. Yes, he is. And that's a really odd instant for such a veteran driver who has been so successful in the Star Mazda moving into here. And well, for Justin Brunner, he will move himself back down into fourth. He will have to worry a little bit about Brian Lockwood, who is about a second, second and a half, two seconds back, who will have back markers to try and help him push up. But for Justin Brunner, that's a really weird one for him. Just got too much on the curb, unsettled the car, and that's thrown him off. And that has promoted Nick Thiessen up into a podium position. On board of Michael Mitner, you can see ahead of them, Tom Ward's Dave and Dean goes side by side. We are mercifully five laps to go. There's still so much action going on here. Michael Mitner, he's going to have a look down to the inside as we head ourselves then down towards the end part of this motor race. And well, look at this one. It's going to be the crossover because here comes the driver of Jordi Lopez Jr. down towards turn number one. And Lopez Jr. will get that pass complete. 
through turn number one, up into two, up into three they come, one more time, as uh, so we've got ourselves another car that is having a Martinez. Round. Oh, I do interrupt you there, but Michael Mitten has just turned himself around at turn number two, up over the curb to try and get past Jordi Lopez. He's had the 360 around and he's lost contact with all of the group and now behind Matthew Daniels. Well, let's get another look at that one after we have a look at this one. You have a Martinez. You can see there is this incident that was down at the chicane. Now we need to have a look at Mike, uh, Mittner. There we can see the back end of that one. Down at turn number three once again. Cam, there's just so much action going on here. We literally don't know what to look at half the time. But Michael Mittner, as good in such a fast as lap of the day, Mittner is your latest driver involved in the trouble carnage spot down at turn number three. Well, absolutely. We have a very slow car of Joel Guez. Not quite sure what has happened to that car 105. Oh, actually, he just completely lost it coming off of one two and three uh so that's what happened with joel Guez. i was almost wondering if he had run him out and uh, run himself out of fuel but uh overall though uh, there's just uh we could go side by side by side by side cameras and i still don't think we'd have enough feeds to show us exactly what is going on on this track here let me tell you as uh it, it has just been absolutely quiet for that number 18 car though of wyatt gooden though will and uh well, he's been having a good race and it is just showing right now Indeed it is as well. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, next thing you need to watch is the next round of the Verizon IndyCar series. It is live on the NBC Sports Network. It is tonight as they head themselves to historic Long Beach. Catch that one on NBC Sports Network and, of course, worldwide on ESPN International. On board, Brian Lookwood heading himself out of seven. Discovery Sim Racing Machine right now. Scrapping it out with Justin Brunner as they head themselves up the hill. And this is the point here that you want to start asking yourself the question, Jake. How far back do I need to be to get the pass done in towards the chicane? Or for Lockwood? Oh, Lockwood's on the grass. This is not going to end up well. Will he somehow manage to slow it down? He does, but he doesn't get the position. Oh, that would have been the pass of the century if he got that one sorted. Because Brunner was very, very defensive on his line in. And well, Lockwood put two wheels on the grass, had to commit to the grass. And well, for Justin Brunner there, he's lucked out of that one. It could have ended oh. horribly. But now he's got three laps to defend. A gap of seven tenths of a second. And for Justin Brunner, this is where times get desperate. And he has to play every trick in the book. In the words of Ric Flair, he has to be the Dutchest player in the game. So there's car spin, span around as well, and that is Bruno Dometer. Yeah, we just saw a car upside down and start finish stretch. I have no idea uh -oh. who it was. We'll try and find out who it was in some form of time. On That's not though, a good sight. With Ryan Lockwood once again. Nick Thiessen right on the rear, though, of Gabon Mech. We've got a battle going on for P4, P5. A battle going on for P2, P3. On board then with Nick Thiessen. He is some tenths of a second back, but he will get a draft from a couple of guys here. And with this stage of the race, if you're Nick Thiessen, you've just been patient. Why a good one? You don't need to set fastest laps anymore, but he does so again. Cam, 118.7 miles an hour. It's giving an indication that it's two miles an hour fastest average compared to what we saw earlier this afternoon. Yeah, well, I mean, the weather just has so much of a ch an effect on this, but uh, it's just one of those things. we got a little bit more humidity. Uh, it's uh, it, With it being mostly cloudy, you know, you actually have should have a little bit more grip. You know, that sun, you don't have that sun just bearing in on the rubber and making everything a little uh, sloppy mess. But, uh, you know, a track temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, a little chilly for these guys, these slicks. But overall, though, I have to say it's a very difficult car to wheel around this Road Atlanta circuit. You don't normally see open wheels here at Road Atlanta, but uh, when you do, it is all always an entertaining product almost a little bit like a, a different sections of the the Nordschleife almost uh, in some ways a very American version of it though and uh, then you've got a really really long long straight and it's just good fun to say the very least Thomas Torp there battling out with David Saranto they'll go side by side down in towards the final corner and it looks like Saranto will win that battle for the moment 38 machine will have to fall back into line just for the minute so your outstanding battles inside the top 10 then. We've got a freeway battle going on with Philippe Leiber, Tom Ward and Stephen Dean. They are scrapping it out for P7, 8 and 9. But we are literally entering the final stage of this motor race because Wyatt Gooden, there we can see him. There is a lap and a half now left for him to go down the hill we come to penultimate time, Jake. Oh, yes, we are. And well, you can just see just how important things are at the moment. Justin Brunner and Brian Lockwood, they'll be looking to go close. But Nick Thiessen and Gabble Mex, that'll be another one to look out for. 
because they are going to be uh, closer than anything possible and well it seems that Matthew Daniels has had an instant from 10th position and that is not ideal by his perspective but what has to be said is there are fantastic battles up and down this field and it's not going to be over just yet. Yeah, we just see there, Matthew Daniels, he's very slow. He's going across the grass. So he was in P number 10. Unfortunately, his day is pretty much done. As Jordi Lopez Jr. there has had himself an incident down in turn number four. The Gecko Vortex Sim Racing car was running in your top 10. Not anymore. Unfortunately, he's in P number nine, but he's had himself an incident. This one was all by himself by the looks of it as well in towards turn number three, back into that car, stepping out, potentially getting himself a little bit of underside damage as well, because here comes Nick Thiessen with Gabor Megstead, one and a bit laps to go on board with Thiessen, not going to be able to get the pass just yet. But ladies and gentlemen, here we are then, one more lap to go, Thiessen versus Mex as they'll head themselves down towards turn number one again. When does Nick Thiessen need to pounce? He's going to look to the outside now as they come down in towards turn number one. But Thiessen will have to stay in line for the time being. That outside line just not working for him just yet. Out front, Wyatt Goodham has a huge, huge advantage over the field. 17 seconds is the gap right now. Justin Bremer versus Brian Lockwood. That one is still three tenths of a second. If anything happens, We'll talk to you about it after the race. I'll tell you one thing. The replay director is going to be very, very busy after this one. So now, here we can see them. Your field heading themselves down into turn number seven. For the final time in this motor race, we're back on board with Nick Thiessen. As he heads himself out of seven, does he get a good run? Actually, no, he doesn't. So it's going to be very tough now for him to get the momentum heading himself down in towards the final couple of corners. In fact, he's only come down by one tenth of a second. He needs more. I'm not sure whether or not he will truly get it, but he is closing as they head themselves down in towards 10A and 10B. Wyatt Gooden, by the way, is heading himself past the start finish line. Gooden wins here at Road Atlanta. Battle for P number two. Doesn't look as though anything's going to happen unless Nick Thiessen can get him up the line. No, he can't. Brian Lockwood versus Brummer. Well, this one has changed position. Lockwood up into P number four as they head themselves down the hill for the final time. Brian Lockwood will move himself up one place, but only just at the line. You can see how close Bremer was when they got to the end of that one. Tom Ward versus Stephen Dean. Tom Ward will win out on that battle. What a crazy, crazy day we've had here today. But this guy, Bryant Gooden, wins out. Wyatt Gooden will win here at Road Atlanta Cam. Well, absolutely an impressive race to say the very least from Wyatt Gooden. A very difficult one for the rest of the field here. Uh, but uh, boy, oh boy, that was uh, dramatic to say the very least as uh, some of these cars have finished. One finished minus a wing, Rene Osterkamp. He actually pulled across the line. He had a self-incident, but uh, I think that was a big thing of today. Th this car, this Formula Renault 2.0 car is so very difficult here for whatever reason. And I think we saw some of the best of the best having issues with the car. Obviously, Wyatt Gooden wasn't one of those, as that was a massive gap to come away with here in a 2K league race. Indeed, it was a huge, huge gap. In fact, probably one of the biggest that we have ever seen. Let's then get a look at your final race results here today, where Wyatt Gooden wins out by 17 seconds over Gabor Mex. Mex able to hold out in the end over Nick Thiessen. That's a fantastic scrap we had going on in the last couple of laps there between Megs and Nick Thiessen. Then Brian Lockwood, he comes home in fourth. Justin Brunner in fifth. Felipe Burr in sixth. And then Ward, Stephen Deem, Jordi Lopez Jr. and Gregory Tanson. They round out your top ten here today. Behind, you can see, you've got yourself Mitna. He had himself a tough end to this motor race. Mark Elkerman in twelfth. Mark Jarvis, Rob Reed, and Rafael Draskas, they are your top 15. We'll cycle through the rest of your field. Honorable mentions have to go to Mikhail De Jong, working himself up a number of positions despite having himself two incidents in this motor race. If he qualified better, who knows where he may want to finish. Then you can see a couple of other drivers doing themselves some good, well-deserved drives here today. We've seen some fantastic racing up and down your field, and yet there's still more results to come up here on your screen. We've got another page of them still to come after this one. Stefan Sika will not be happy by his finish. We saw him earlier on today as well. And then finally, you can see some people who are really upset. David Williams, Simon Povey, and Arian Defrita, especially. Povey was at one point second in this event. Williams was running himself in the top 15. And Arian Defrita 
Well, he was inside your top 10 as well, and key number 47 is not where he wants to be. We're going to step aside for just one moment. We're back with post race coverage after these messages. You're watching Facebook TV Primetime on iRacing Live. Since 2010, the highest echelon of sim racing competition has focused on NASCAR and Grand Prix racing. 50 of the best drivers in the world doing battle for championship glory. Each man for himself. And even though there may be teammates on track, each driver is in command of his own destiny. Until now. 2016 sees the start of a new era in world championship competition with team racing getting its chance in the spotlight. No longer can one driver rule supreme, but you must rely on those with whom you share a car, a setup, a strategy. Endurance racing can be very different to other forms of motorsports, with races in this series lasting either three or six hours. Teams of two or three drivers, perhaps on opposite sides of the world, will share seat time, each having to collectively work towards one common goal. Crash out? And it's not just you who you let down. Officially sanctioned by SRO, it will be teams of drivers who will go head to head, car to car, rival to rival in the pursuit of a championship. And there's over $25,000 in cash and prizes up for grabs. Some of the world's biggest sim racing teams are represented. There's also a group of teams who haven't seen this stage before, who want to make their mark and say we can hang with the best. The team racing revolution is here. It's loud, it's exciting, and it lives on iRacing Live, starting April 23rd. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to post race coverage here from Road Atlanta, round number two of the Formula Renault 2K World Cup. What a crazy, crazy day it's been at Road Atlanta. We've had a taste of things to come earlier on here today, but when the big boys came out to play, my word, was it exciting. We had close quarter racing, passing, drafting, free wide, everything. A couple of self-inflicted spins and crashes. A couple of mayhem moments. But hey, we had some good fun along the way as well. Gonna get ourselves a quick chat then with Philippe Labour. Philippe, coming home here today. Well, in P6, but Philippe, we want to talk about both this and the race we saw earlier. How much did your tyres fall off? Because it just seems to me you were good at the start. And you'd fall back a little bit. Well, I had the front wing damage. I, uh, I hit the car in front who, who spun in turn seven. So I lost my front wing almost completely. And uh, that cost me more than a second per lap. So I, I couldn't defend against the guys behind. That's, that's why I was uh, so slow. Well, talk us through this event overall. Cause it was very congested at the start. Um, but self-inflicted spin seems to be the order of the day, both in turn three and turn five. Just how difficult was that portion of the racetrack? Yeah, turn five especially is uh, is a bitch. <laughs> it's uh, it's very easy to to overcook it, and and when you're too eager on on the throttle, then you just spin out because uh, your car is launched in the air on the bumps. And I, I spun there too because uh, after my pit stop, I got some front uh, downforce again, and I wasn't used to that, and uh, it caught me out in the first uh, lap. So. It's very easy to lose it there. I think most <laughs> half of the people uh, went off there. For the record, if there's a corner at VIR called it, you can say it. Simple as that. Um, <laughs> so, um, of course, next time out, we're back to Skip Barber 2K World Cup for Leap. Just how hard is it 
switching between these two cars. At first it was pretty difficult uh, because, uh, well, no downforce, it's a totally different way of driving. But uh, once you, you're, you've switched a few times, it's not that bad. It takes me about five laps to get in, in the rhythm again. So I don't think it will have a, an ill effect on, uh, on my, my pace in the skippy. Well, thank you very much there, Philippe Leiber, coming home in P number six in the TNT racing machine. Jake, before we go, what a crazy day of Formula Renaults we've had. Oh, yes, absolutely. You've seen all these drivers up and down your field have stunning battles, have themselves in a position where incidents have happened left, right and centre. There'll be quite a few people unhappy with what's happened today. There'll be only one or well, a few people who will be really happy with what happens today. And everyone will now be sitting up at Wyatt Gooden, not just here in the Formula Renault, but all across iRacing itself. Because if this driver can pull that sort of performance out of the bag against some of the best, well, he'll be a driver that will certainly be looking out for in any series that he enters throughout the rest of his career. Well, of course, next week we head ourselves back to Skippy action. We'll be back for round three of the um, Formula Renault 2.0 2K World Cup in just two weeks' time. This has been a Racebot TV presentation of the Formula Renault 2K World Cup, streaming live on iRacing Live, your home, some of the world's best sim racing broadcasters. From Cam Walsh, Jake Sperry, I've been Will Vincent. We shall talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.